the diamond sutra human mind is schizophrenic indeed human mind is schizophrenic humanity has not been yet total east is introvert and subjective in nature this has given birth to mysticism philosophy and religions east has given birth to mysticism philosophy and religions west is extrovert objective in nature this has given birth to science technology and advances this has created a split when your inward journey begins and you come close to you then how can you remain poor a different kind of a journey has begun this is the mathematics this is the arithmetic of life it is in the hands of droplets is hidden the destiny of the ocean it is the droplets that reveal the destiny the essence of the ocean earlier on as you were when light reaches the eyes and reflect through the eyes it creates a web of its own activities its own web like a spider's web but the day you have seen that which you have preserved for lives and lives in the inner depth of eyes for the sake of that which is then this process of the web that eyes are been creating for lives and lives comes to an end a new journey begins because eyes have seen that which it has preserved in its depth for a long period of time but until that happens man is split is schizophrenic this is that all great masters have come from the east and all the great scientists have evolved in the west west has developed science and has completely forgotten about the inward journey west is concerned with matter in the process it has forgotten the inner subjectivity the whole focus is on the out of the object hence all the great scientists the objective minds are born in the west east has become too much concerned with the inner soul and has forgotten the objectivity matter and the world out of this religious masters developed but this is not a healthy situation this should not be so man should become one integrated he should not be allowed to remain lopsided any more man should remain fluid like he should neither be extrovert nor introvert either you are extrovert or you are introvert have you seen a person who is neither extrovert nor introvert 
these are the two shores two shores of the bed the river bed or the bed of life and it's which he continued to flow he is like the tight rope walker who swings to the left or to the right towards extrovert or introvert to maintain his balance somewhere in an unknown realm introvert becomes extrovert and extrovert becomes introvert the two boundaries merge into one another man should be capable of being both together simultaneously when two sides inner and outer balance each other a great harmony arises and then man i will then you will experience the greatest ecstasy the greatest harmony that there is the ultimate one who is neither leaning towards the inner too much not towards the outer too much is indeed in equilibrium he will be a scientist and a mystic simultaneously that is something that is bound to happen and my effort is that you should be rich in both realms the inner and outer and when the two balance one another there is a beauty of a different kind in search of religion people forget the outer and in an effort of the journey of the outer we forget the inner neither of the two should be overlooked simultaneously you are a scientist of inner and that of out and the mystic of the outer i would like to see a man who is not one sided to be eastern against western is an as is as ugly as being western as against eastern the whole earth belongs to us and we belong to the whole earth a man should be just man a man should be just man and not divided total or whole and out of that wholeness will arise a new kind of a healthy awareness awareness which is total and because of this split is schizophrenia both east and west have suffered tremendously the eastern suffering has assumed the form of all around poverty and starvation and west too has suffered this is evident through the western mind that is full of tension anxiety and anguish west is very poor within while the east is very poor outwardly when in the west we decide to move for the inward journey we want to relinquish the outer life the outer comforts nothing has to be abandoned poverty in any form is unpleasant whether it is inner or outer it makes no difference poverty should not be allowed at any stage however the degrees of richness and the degrees of poverty differ from person to person within one's own means man should be rich both inner and outer he should be multidimensionally rich just think of a man who is an albert einstein and a gautam buddha two in one 
just meditate on that possibility and indeed that is possible who is in the outer world completely a scientific minded objective and a totally subjective life awareness is that of a buddha many masters have exhibited this Hazrat Ubaidullah Ahrar Ahrar was the place to which he belonged Ubaidullah was his name and Naqshbandi Sheikh He belonged to a, a kingly family His father was king of a small estate He was the only son of his parents He has leaned towards the spiritual discipline, the inward. His father said, "I will send you today to fulfill that quest, but you have to give me a promise when I meet you, because you are my only son. When I meet you, you will have to come back and take charge of the kingdom. In order to get the permission to go." to fulfill his inward quest he gave that promise not whole heartedly just because once he gives that promise he will be given the permission to go to this to continue his inward quest he went and stayed in the company of his sheikh attain to the state of khalifa would the chief disciple one day a message came from his father that he needs him back obad told his sheikh that now i do not have any interest in running or taking care of the kingdom sheikh said Yes, this is the time that you are capable. You are ready to take care of the kingdom. Earlier on, if you were in the kingdom, you would be doing with a different approach. Now you take care of this as my gift to you, as my position. This kingdom is a gift to you from me. everything that comes in life we consider it as our own our wife husbands children jobs house the moment you realize it comes from the divine as a gift and you have to take care of it it comes from the divine as a gift and you have to take care of it your total approach towards it will be a different kind you will take care of that particular gift that has been given to you in a different way as if you are taking care of the position of someone master tell you i give you this as my gift take care of it when sheikh told to bad he agreed to go and take care of the kingdom earlier on there are two stages of taking care of it you can take care of something in a attached manner you are living for that the other way is you take care of it in a very detached manner this has been given to me it does not belong to me so when sometimes people say that you are the owner of the business no my status is the same i am also an employee a worker Yes, my status, my powers, my authority may be higher than yours. 
Everything belongs to the divine that has been given to me as a gift. I have to make sure in the absence that I am given that authority to take care of it with the instruction from his sheikh. Kobad came to his, his father was on the deathbed. He handed over the reins of kingdom to him and he passed away. Kobad started taking care of the kingdom. He was the custodian of the kingdom. He used to take only that much money out of that which was necessary for maintaining the life of an ascetic. He could live in a very ostentatious way. Yes, when he is in the court performing the responsibility of a king, he was in that garb, in that splendor because there is a particular decorum attached to the king, a particular kind of robe, a particular kind of throne, and all that associates with it. The kingly splendor, kingly duties may be between a certain hours, and after that, he will retire into his small hut where he will spend the life of an ascetic. This you too can do. You may have a very important, a prestigious, high profile job. Every day when you finish that job, Retire into your ascetic attire, ascetic form and take care of the inner. This is the state of being in the world but not letting the world be in you. He is the king yet is still it is a role that he is performing. One day it happened two fellow disciples of Ubadullah had the desire to know if there is a possibility the man can be in the world and yet still be an ascetic, two poles simultaneously merged into one another. The Sheikh told him, "You, if you happen to be an era, go to Ubad. Ubad is the king of that place. These two fellow disciples of Ubadullah came to meet the king Ubadullah. They came to meet the ascetic Ubadullah, but they had to come to the palace where the ascetic Ubad was living. They had to pass through the kingly splendor because he is a king. He is an ascetic in the form of, in the garb of a king or a king in the garb of an ascetic. His inner and outer merge into one another. Now when you come to a king's place, you will not see an ordinary furniture, ordinary deco, the deco has to be of a different kind than of an ordinary person. And when they came, a thought came to their mind. When he is in such a state where even the ordinary spoons, the forks are of gold, how can he be detached? Now, if you are, if you have financial resources, 
you are holding a high status in the society, you will have to keep the decor of your house in relation to that. So when they sat down in Marakba, there was an obstruction in the flow of the energy. The doors of these two fellow disciples were closed. Sheikh, through his intuitive insights, realized what was the problem. Then he asked. He addressed those, those two fellow disciples and he said, Look at the heart of this humble servant. Do you see the impression of those gold and silver that you saw in the stable on the heart of this person? I may acquire anything. There are people who have nothing and yet still they want to hold on to their bags. Then there is a situation you do not hesitate when it comes to sharing, to give all that you have, the material or otherwise. Something that you have cherished, when a moment comes, you part away with that. You have no hesitation in giving. That state is the state. When you are in the world, but the world is not in you. In fact, if Albert Einstein and Gautam Buddha become one, the brain of Albert Einstein and the inner serenity of Gautam Buddha merges. Just meditate on that possibility. Indeed, that is possible. In fact, if Albert Einstein had lived a little longer, he would have turned a mystic. He had already started thinking about the inner and some of his quotations when you look into, they have that texture of the innerness. He was becoming interested in inner mysteries. How long can a man remain interested in the outer mystery alone? If you are really interested in mystery, then sooner or later you will stumble upon the inner essence. And that is what happened to him. My concept of the world, which is neither the East oriented nor the West oriented, it is neither leaning to the inner nor outer, instead, it is a balance. In Pythagoras, in Omar Khayyam, the polarities of East and West merge to create a symphony. The two polarities merge into one another to create a symphony. But this has not been the case in the past. That is why this talk is relevant. In the past, East has been obsessed with the inner as against the outer. Naturally, when down the centuries you have been obsessed with the inner, you will create a Buddha, a Nagarjuna, a Shankar, a Ramakrishna, a Raman, a Kabir. It is quite natural. And if you are obsessed with the outer as against the inner, you will create an Albert Einstein, an Addington, an Addison, a C.V. Raman. And that is quite natural, but it is not good for the totality of the human beings. Something is missing. The man who has grown inwardly alone and has not grown outwardly, will need, will indeed be juvenile. He will remain stupid outside. And at the same time, the similar will be the case of one who has grown much as far as mathematics, 
physics and chemistry goes but deep inside he is not yet born drop all hemispheres the east and west inner and outer become flute like be available to the outer and to inner both this is the reason my whole emphasis is on love and meditation as two feet just as to walk you need two feet to fly you need two wings the two wings that has been given to you that you have to allow to evolve and develop our love and meditation the two feet that you need to walk along the thoroughfare of life are love and meditation love is the passage to move outward love is the passage to move outward and meditation is the passage to move within love is the passage it is the thoroughfare to move outward and meditation is the passage to move within and a man who is in love and meditation is certainly beyond all schizophrenia and is split he is integrated soul has attained fruition the spring in the garden of the being the spring in the garden of being has come any moment will announce the blossoming of the first flower and when first flower blossoms whether it is a rose flower rose of meditation or love of love as orchid it is the announcement of this arrival of the season of the spring soon the garden will be filled with its beauty and fragrance it will invite many butterflies to it will in, invite many many butterflies to that garden be that garden of eternal be that garden of eternal to invite the myriad butterflies who will flutter their wings around the beauty and the fragrance of the flower gather nectar and convert into something ambrosia that is needed for your growth this is my whole effort to establish a communion between love and meditation a state where love dissolves into meditation and meditation becomes the love